morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending where you are in the world. Today's webinar is impedance test basics, what it is, how it works, and how to choose the equipment. Let's, next slide, please. Uh, the presenters today will uh, the presenter today will be Clemang Sanchez. Clemang is an audiologist. He's a product manager in uh, uh, in the area of hearing assessment. I'm the moderator. My name is Mariana Rosling Ensign, and uh, I'm an education and training manager manager at Automatics. Next slide, please. And some practical um, stuff about the webinar. All participants are mute, and the reason for that is because of the background noise. It's possible to ask questions during the session, and uh, you can write in the question box, and now we'll select some questions to be answered in the end of the webinar. Uh, if your question is not answered, all the questions will be answered afterwards. So when we finish the webinar, I will write an email to you, and then we will answer you the questions. If you have any tech, technical issue, please uh, tell us and write and I, I will answer you. Uh, after the webinar, you will receive a, uh, a questionnaire uh, to evaluate the webinar. So that's the practical, uh, practical tips and tips about the webinar. Clemen, welcome. And yeah. please. So, um, I'm very uh, very happy to um, to present some um, some tricks tips and tricks about imitant uh, test basics. Uh, the purpose of this uh, webinar is uh, not to describe the imitant testing today because those tests actually are mostly known, and uh, so I won't describe what is a tympanogram and uh, what is the purpose of tympanogram. But I will actually uh, explain what are the the important parts of uh, a solution, an imitant solution um, that you should um, take care about or pay attention to in order to, uh, to deliver uh, the best uh, experience for, uh, for the customer, but also uh, for your own practice. So, for example, regarding the test we are using today, uh, it's uh, we can actually divide um, different packages of tests as you can find in the products today in the market and from the industry. Basically, we uh, use to distinguish the different packages in three segments. The first segment uh, can be uh, called a quick check or screening segment, but also a basic entry level. And usually you will find in the industry and in the market in this first segment, the basic test like um, sweep auto tympanometry, also called, for example, uh, screening tympanometry. And usually in this uh, entry level of test, you will actually find the frequency probe tone um, used for adults, which is usually the 226 hertz, uh, compared to the 1000 hertz, which is usually uh, offered for um, infants or kids or babies below six months old. But also you will find uh, the reflex screening. So the reflex screening compared, and just to make sure that we are talking the same uh, language, uh, reflex screening compared to the reflex threshold you can find on the, on the line just below. The reflex screening just will, uh, will, uh, will be about a, a sweeping uh, uh, through different, uh, different frequencies. Basically, you have the 0.5 kilohertz up to 4 kilohertz. Um, so now you can see also a mid-range segment, uh, which can be used as or named as diagnostic segment or mid-segment. And in this, uh, this uh, uh, mid-segment, Usually you find uh, more tests like the manual tympanometry, which allows actually the user to perform the tympanometry with, uh, with, uh, with a wheel to adjust, uh, adjust the pressure. But also you will find on top of the reflex screening I talked about before, a reflex threshold. Uh, and basically you will also find the contrast stimulation threshold and also a test called reflex decay you might know. So this test, reflex decay, um, can be also questioned uh, about his uh, reliability and the needs today in 2016, 
but it's uh, it's mainly the this kind of uh, packages of tests you will find in the entry level and mid uh, mid segment uh, products and finally uh, regarding the test battery uh, in the high end segment or called sometimes clinical uh, you will find also all the tests I've described before but for example you will also get more proptons like the 678 or 800 Hertz proptons uh, you will also find tests for a station tube um, and also you can find a test like the, the BNG tympanograms or tests like the admittance recorder uh, this test admittance recorder I won't spend too much time on it uh, but basically the idea is to be able to record the admittance as the, the title says uh, without stimulating so you can have different applications uh, based on this but uh, but basically the idea uh, from the industry is to provide different packages of tests and uh, with always a high-end uh, segment providing as much as uh, as the company uh, provide so that's the idea about the different tests but now now you you, you know actually uh, what kind of tests you need in your uh, uh, practice in your clinical practice and uh, what is relevant for your diagnostic or what is relevant for the for the hospital diagnostic or practice but let's now focus on what are the main parts of an emittance device and that's actually the core of this webinar something we need to know as a customer as potential uh, user of, uh, of new solutions if you need to acquire a new one. The most sensitive part of an emittent solution is basically the probe. Why is the probe the main uh, important part or sensitive part of uh, such a piece of equipment? It's because it's a, it's a lot of technology uh, concentrated in a small packaging. And this probe is also uh, the part which will be in contact with the patient, meaning that this part will be introduced, as you know, in the ear canal of the patient. So a lot of technology packaged in a small housing and in contact with the ear of the patient. Compared to a headset used in audiometry, uh, this part will be introduced inside the ear canal, so will be in conditions quite um, um, tough for any kind of electronic which is miniaturized. Basically in this uh, probe we used to find um, a microphone, a receiver and also a pressure sensor. So a lot of different important transducers miniaturized and uh, introduced in the in a, in an ear canal which can be very um, very hot, very, uh, very warm uh, with earwax so these conditions can actually uh, trigger the quality of, uh, of the components. So that's why it's the most sensitive part of the, uh, of the emittent solution. So what should we be careful and what should we um, take care when we choose an emittent solution is mainly about what kind of probe technology are you using, how big is the probe, how reliable is the probe, and basically what is the choice of your probe. Because you know, as you can see on the picture, on the left, picture, left uh, side picture, uh, we have a, a small probe um, which can be uh, easily introduced, placed and left on the ear of the patient. In the industry, it's not rare to, um, to call this probe a diagnostic probe. Compared to a pen probe, you can see on the right side of the of the slide, a pen probe uh, was actually more used in the past. Uh, now we are using actually, or we find more small, tiny diagnostic probes. But it also depends of your habits, how you feel with it. The difference between uh, these two probes, of course, obviously is the size, for sure, but it's also the control you want to keep when you do the test. Because the, the small, tiny probe, most of the time you need to leave this probe in the ear, and then, of course, the control on the seating or um, all the parts which can actually um, decrease the reliability or break the seating of uh, of the testing uh, are very very sensitive in the choice or your practice 
basically uh, some of the users, some of the professionals will definitely prefer to have a paint probe because they can feel that they have a better uh, control on the seating. Some of the customers will prefer the tiny probe. The best way will be actually to have both and it's available in uh, some systems in the industry in different manners with different uh, flexibility. Sometimes you have to choose one or the other and uh, the best solution will actually be uh, to be able to have both uh, just uh, uh, available at some point when you need it. So basically on this picture you can see that um, both probes are, can be available in uh, different shapes as well. But it's also important when you uh, choose the probe to select uh, different, uh, different elements which are very uh, sensitive to keep the control of your test. Because when we talk about emittance, if you compare to audiometry, the difference we are talking here about an objective test. And it can be very, very good for many, many users to have an objective test. I know the doctors also really like to have objective uh, results compared to subjective results, of course, because they can remove a lot of uh, factors which could actually uh, decrease the reliability or the accuracy of the test, like how is the patient at that period of time when we do the test? Did he take some medication? Is he tired? Is he sick? Uh, and all these factors will change actually the quality of the results. But having an objective test is way better. But on the other hand, when we rely on, a, on an objective test, we rely on the machine. We have less control. So we need to find some kind of balance. And to find some kind of balance from emittent solution, we need to have some kind of control of what we are doing. Most of the time when I talk to professionals performing emittent testing, they tell me, yeah, the, um, no problem with the emittent solution except that Sometimes I'm not able to reach the seating and how is it possible? What is the problem? Is it about me? Is it about the ear of the patient? Is it about uh, the solution in itself or is it my, um, my device which is not working properly? And that's actually uh, the main questions we can have with an objective uh, testing solution like an emittance we are providing. So providing the right uh, feedbacks to for you to feel in, in control is very, very important when you select an emittent solution. What are the controls I'm talking about is, for example, the light indicators. The light indicators you can find on the probes, most of the time located in back of the probe, um, are very, very important for the users. That's very, very sensitive because we know now when the test is performed or is performing when um, we have something, we have an issue with the seating, uh, when the test is finally done, or even if the test is recorded in the right ear, because you can choose the right ear on the patient, but is the machine controlling or receiving or storing the data uh, for the right ear? So all these elements, they are uh, very, very important to take into consideration when you select the solution and we see when you select the most sensitive part of the solution, which is the probe. So the light indication, but also um, the form factor of the probes are very, very sensitive and you should pay attention to that. Now why is the probe so sensitive part? Uh, for example, here you have an what we call an exploded view of, uh, of a probe. This probe uh, is actually uh, the, f the probe from the Autoflex, the Matzen Autoflex. The Matzen Autoflex uh, is actually um, a handheld solution, a portable emittent solution uh, with a very, very nice probe. We uh, compared to the former solution which was the, uh, the Matzen Zodiac, we have developed a, a tiny probe uh, with a company called Hortman. We uh, Autometrics acquired a couple of years ago. But as you can see, if you go into details of this uh, piece of technology, it's extremely complex and that's why uh, in the slide before I mentioned the sensitivity of this, this, this part, which is the probe. So basically, as you can see on the probe, we have 35 components in a very uh, tiny piece of uh, hardware. This piece of hardware is just a couple of grams. So it's, we are about four to five grams. 
and we have 35 components, uh, 9 air connections and 4 electrical connections and obviously when you reduce the size of the probe but you keep so many many components you can of course increase the risk of, um, of uh, lack of stability problems with the probes and I'm sure you have experience if you are using the emittance solutions or devices today in the market uh, most of the problems you will uh, you will uh, you will face are actually based on the are coming from the probe that's very very sensitive part and as you can see a large part of the components is made uh, because of the filter because I told you before this part in contact with the ear canal um, you will actually uh, face issues from the earwax or humidity or, uh, or the temperature from the body and the filters can easily get um, full of, uh, of earwax for example or liquid from uh, otitis or ear effusion and that's very very important for you to make sure that the probe is reliable. Of course, to know if a probe is reliable, you need to know if this device is providing a reliable probe. Uh, but for us, as manufacturer, we also need to take into consideration the size of the probe, decreasing the size to the minimum in order to have a light probe, a tiny probe with a good placement in the ear, but also a probe you can leave in the ear canal making sure that you won't break the ceiling and by doing that we need to work on the number of components in order to decrease the, the weight but also to increase the stability throughout the life of the device. So you can see that probe is sensitive for you and it's also very sensitive for the manufacturer. It's a very very advanced piece of technology. So, as I told you, now you can see the picture. This probe was the, was the one um, used in the, um, in the Autoflex. Now, another very important part is uh, the probe tip. The probe tip is this, uh, is this part which is coming on top of the probe where you can plug the ear tip. So, the ear tip is this mushroom, uh, mushroom shape uh, piece of plastic which will be introduced in the in the ear but this mushroom will actually come on top of the what we call the prop tip the prop tip is also very very sensitive depends of course on the on the test you want to provide but today we need actually to have a prop tip offering more and more possibilities in terms of uh, stimulation tone stimulation prop tone stimulation it means that it's not rare to use this prop tip for other purposes than just the tympanometry or reflex. It can also be used uh, for OAE, for example, or possibility to develop OAE solutions in the future embedded in the same device. But we also have, we need more consideration when you choose this prop tip. It's very, very important, for example, for you to go to a transparent prop tip. Why do you need to go for, or what should it be an idea to go for a transparent prop tip? It's because it gives you the possibility to go or to, to see through this prop tip and to make sure that we don't have the liquid I've mentioned before uh, from the ear, uh, ear canal of the patient like otitis or ear infusions or, or whatever. It's very uh, sensitive, this uh, liquid or earwax going through the probe because based on the slide you have seen before, technology is so sensitive that these elements will destroy on a, on even on a short or mid-term uh, timeline. So transparency is quite important. So don't focus on the picture on top right. This picture, actually this 3D picture just shows actually the, the different canals you can find in the prop tip. But Transparency is very, very important. In, in Autometrics, we work closely with the company Genry Sound, which is actually uh, working in a very, very tiny uh, pieces of technology for hearing aids. And this collaboration with our sister company help us to develop solutions which can actually uh, be made in a more easy way. 
because of, uh, of the different tools we are using. When I talk about the tools, it's actually the picture you can see on the slide. Those tools are very, very important in the process of manufacturing the components you will use on an everyday uh, basis. Uh, basically, having these tools uh, allows us to uh, design the right prop tip for you. And for us, transparency is not just the only um, uh, component or part we need to take care of when we talk about the prop tip, but also the lens of the prop tip. As you can see, having the, the smallest lens as the different drawing, the technical drawing, you can see these technical drawings are just examples we are sometimes drawing when we develop a prop for different a solution. It's not just for emittance. It can be used for other uh, other purposes. But this uh, these drawings they show that we can actually work on the lens. Uh, the lens is of course defined uh, based on the on the acoustic components we need to provide, and also the lens come on top of the diameter of the prop tip. Basically, for you, the lens is important to actually be able to test the smallest ear canals. And I'm talking about the babies, for example, or the infant. Usually, we talk about using a prop tone, which should be a 1000 Hz for kids below six months old. But you also need to, uh, to take care of the lens of, uh, of the ear tip, because the ear canal of, of a kid, of a baby, is way shorter, as you know. So having a, a, a prop tip which is too long can be very difficult for the for the for the little patient, but also for you to conduct the test. Same for the for the diameter. Why do we need a, a small diameter? Is actually to be able to place the mushroom, the the, the ear tip I've mentioned before. So this plastic mushroom uh, piece uh, for the babies, for the smallest ear, uh, you can actually test. So, when you choose a prop, don't forget to take a look at the prop tip, which is a very sensitive part as well. So, transparency for you to check actually if you have some earworks, some liquid going into the prop, just to make sure that you fix this issue between each patient. But also the lens, having a, a lens which is a, the, the shortest as possible, and also the diameter, just to make sure you can adjust and adapt the ear tips, uh, the smallest ear tips for the smallest ear canal. All right, here you have an overview of different probes uh, we test, we develop, uh, we take uh, take a look uh, at, and you can see that uh, it can vary uh, quite a lot. But basically, it's important to have uh, to have a uh, prop tip with a diameter between 2.7, as you can see on the autoflex, up to I would say 3.4. Uh, or 3.8 uh, millimeters to make sure that you can actually adjust the right tip uh, and the right uh, mushroom size on it. Now, the second biggest part of an emittance device is you uh, an emittance device you need to, uh, to to focus on is also the pump. The pump is quite uh, quite important if you want to have a fast test but also a constant pressure delivered by your system. Here you have two pieces of technology uh, and, uh, and you have the plus and the minus for each of them. On the right side, you have actually the, the pump technology providing infinite um, uh, pressure uh, delivery through the system. And this, uh, this small pump is quite tiny. And it's, uh, it works very well for if you need a handheld or portable solution. On the other hand, having a small pump like this one can actually provide some limitation in terms of, um, of, of reliability. Because you know, as uh, for, the, for any kind of piece of technology, if you decrease the size of the components or you want to provide the same performance in a smaller housing, you have the risk to increase the reliability. So it's actually very important for you to consider uh, the reliability, but also the capability for your pump to reset as fast as possible compared to having a portable solution in your practice. On the left part of the picture, you have a more traditional syringe pump technology uh, or piston technology, which offers actually uh, more uh, capabilities in terms of reset the pressure and also providing uh, providing a fast 
uh, fast functionality in terms of uh, delivering the pressure throughout the system. Obviously, uh, the drawback from the syringe pump is the size. But once again, what do you want to choose? Something portable? or something faster and definitely more reliable throughout the lifetime of a device, of an emittance device. Uh, basically, we consider in the industry the, the length or the lifetime of, uh, of a solution as uh, around 13 to uh, 15 years old for an emittance solution. Okay. And finally, I will uh, finish up with this uh, with this long slide. I won't go uh, uh, through that uh, all the points uh, of, of of this of this slide. But the idea now is to consider the hygiene, the hygiene of a solution, uh, because I told you from the very first slide that we have to keep in mind that emittent solutions are solutions which are in contact with your patient and basically introduced inside the ear canal of the patient. So hygiene is also a growing hot topic these years in many, many countries and in many, many facilities. So what you need to take a look, what you need to consider is all the operations you will have to, to perform or to go through the solutions. How many buttons will you have to, to touch before doing a TIMP? The best way is just to have an auto start or just click one button to deliver the TIMP because you need to make sure that you won't touch too many times the device. Also, for example, today we talk more and more about touchscreen solutions everywhere around us. And it's fine when we talk about tablet or when we talk about mobile, mobile phone. But now we are talking about a clinical solution in a clinical environment. Touchscreen is definitely something you should be very careful with not touching too many times the product, making sure you can clean the different surfaces, making sure that the different components are plastic or silicon-like that you can, you can clean. For example, the shoulder strap you will put on the shoulder of the patient to do, for example, a contralateral stimulation. This shoulder strap, if it's in piece of fabric, definitely you will struggle to reach or to match the hygienic uh, rules in, in many, many clinics. And these hygiene, once again, these rules are getting more and more important today, in 2016, but also in the coming years. All right. So I'm stopping now for this, uh, for this presentation. And just to, uh, to wrap up this presentation, just keep in mind that when you consider acquiring a new evidence solution, keep in mind the prop technology, the ear, the prop tip, very, very important, the size of the probe, the weight of the probe, but also the pump, what kind of technology is included in my solution. And finally, one piece of, um, of features you really need to consider because it's getting bigger and bigger is the hygiene and the capability to clean your solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clement. Thank you for your presentation. Now it's time for questions. Uh, I can see my screen that we haven't got any question uh, right now. So if you have anyone, you should uh, quickly write something to us and then Clement will be able to answer you. Clement, I have a question for you. So, yeah. uh, Are you saying that we shouldn't use a handheld uh, equipment because of the bone? It's really it's a very good question. I, I didn't want to be too uh, too strong in my uh, recommendations because it really depends on the needs uh, in your uh, in your practice. Basically, uh, I spend uh, a long long time with users in many many countries, and myself, I was actually uh, a clinician in the past. And portability has never been, and we have also this experience with the Autoflex, which is a portable solution we actually have noticed that portability is not really fundamental for I uh, would say 90% of the of the users of course if you want to do to practice some emittance testing uh, at home or if you want to have home visits uh, for emittance it's quite rare honestly but um, that's something we need to consider or you need to consider but on the other hand having something portable you need to know that you will increase the risk of instability 
I said that the components have to be reduced to the minimum, as we have seen for the pump, for example. And reducing the components and the housing will increase the risk of instability. And it's not rare to hear, and we also had this experience, that customers are getting unhappy because they have some troubles with, uh, with the pump or with the probe because it's too sensitive. But also the battery, that's something we need to, to consider. And, and finally, the usability. I didn't talk too much about usability through that, this, uh, this presentation because it's a huge topic. But usability or ease of use is how easy it is to read the display, how easy to store the data, how easy it is to, um, to store the data through that or into, uh, into a computer afterwards, how easy it is to handle the different functionalities. Is it difficult just to make a tympanometry because everything is smaller with a small screen with just too many or too, uh, not too many buttons? That's something you definitely need to consider. And I've seen actually customers that they are so happy about their solutions. We have a solution in our portfolio called Madsen Zodiac, which is in the market for more than 25 years. And it's definitely not a portable solution. It's a real classic standalone, very easy to use, a big screen, not too many buttons. And people are very, very happy when they need to move it just put it on the cart and change the place with their solution. That's something you definitely need to consider. On a daily basis, I would personally recommend to go for a reliable and easy to use solution instead of portable and fancy solution. Okay, thank you. I can see that we haven't got any more questions. So, Kemang, thank you for your participation here. Mm -hmm. You all will receive a survey where we ask you to evaluate our webinar. We will be happy for you to do that. And uh, I see you next time in a month uh, for our next webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.